Hi, my name is Shelby Davis, and today is my birthday. <laughs> a couple of my teenage neighbors dropped by to help me celebrate. And somehow, looking at these pictures, I knew they'd ask me about the Groovy Girls. Who are the Groovy Girls? Oh, some friends I grew up with. There are five of us, and we've been the Groovy Girls ever since I can remember. Look, here's Linda. She's the brain of the group. Graduated high school when she was 14 and college at 18. She's a chemist now. Here's Keisha. She's the one with the money. They all have money, Philly. Yeah, but Mrs. Jackson has serious, serious money. Oh, now, Natasha, what can I say about Natasha? Isn't she the lady who made a lot of money in real estate? Yes. See, after her husband died, she had two kids to support. Oh, now look, this here is my best friend, Vashti. I babysit for her. She's an artist, isn't she? Yes, and a very good one, I might add. And I bet you don't know who this is. That's you, Mrs. Davis. Are you still a school teacher? Yes, but I'm into real estate now. Looking at these photos reminds me of all the good and bad times we shared together. Even though we've been friends all our lives, I, I don't think we really got a chance to know each other until about two years ago. Monday, and Natasha had invited us to lunch. As usual, Vashti was late. She was always late. Aren't you ladies a girl? Hello! The groovy girls are together again. Heaven help the world. <laughs> How did we used to say it in high school, Shelby? Remember? It's been a while. Groovy girls, groovy girls. Rah, rah, rah. Groovy girls, groovy girls. Ha, ha, ha. Get us if you can. Ha, ra, ra. We don't kiss. We don't tell, and we don't plan to go to hell. But do we give it up? Oh, no. Do we give it up? Oh, no. <laughs> I can't believe that we were
were that silly and immature in high school. I can't believe we're still that silly. Grown women acting like children. I know. We're sort of like Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, don't you think? Peter Pan? Linda, you say the strangest things sometimes. It's because I'm neurotic. My psychiatrist isn't a manic depressive. Psychiatrist? Darling, you see a shrink? Yeah, I'll tell you about it one day. You don't look crazy to me. Well, intellectuals are a little crazy. Who'd have thought we'd still be friends after all this time? Mm -hmm. To a lifetime of friendship. May there be no secrets between us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Friendship, Friendship with no secret. Well then, ladies, what's this meeting all about? Natasha has an absolutely fabulous idea, Vashtar. What I have in mind, we can't lose. We should go into the cosmetic business. Well, listen, what kind of money would each of us have to come up with? Um, about 25000 and we'd get a bank loan for the other 200000 We do have excellent banking connections, you know. Ah, uh, yes, there's nothing like a groovy girl with money, especially old money. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you call this company, the, the Groovy Girls Cosmetic Company? Nothing as corny as that. Keisha, that fragrance you're wearing. It's wild. What kind of perfume is that? <laughs> What's it? That's what we'll call it. Our cosmetic company. We'll call it perfume. Ouch! Two perfume. Yeah. Come on, Vesta. Oh, well, what the hell? to perfume. <laughs> uh. Keisha's husband Robert was a successful auto mechanic, but the scars of Vietnam had left him unpredictable and violent. What is wrong with you? Have you lost your mind, woman? What is wrong with you wrecking my car? What is wrong with that alcoholic fund you call a brain? What is wrong with you? I can't believe it. Why would you do this to me? Why would you wreck my Rolls Royce? You couldn't wait to get yours out the shop. Just had to wreck mine. Had to wreck my car. You know how long it took me to get this car from England? You know how long it took. I got right hand drive. You understand me, woman? I got right hand drive. But the problem is, I got a left headed woman. That's my problem. She just won't embarrass me. But no wife of mine is going to make you look sushi and stupid. You can believe that. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Just your wife. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Just get up. Hey, what's wrong with you people? Would you people please stop the noise and let some decent people get some sleep around here? Lady, you better shut up and get back inside unless you want to make the news. There was always a party at Natasha's mansion. And while it was a good excuse for the Ruby girls to get together, most of us suspected she really used these occasions to meet eligible bachelors. Oh, you absolutely sick today. Thank you. Oh, Shabby darling, you look absolutely sick today. Why do you have to act so phony? Look phony, act phony, talk phony. Why can't you be for real for a change? Oh, and I suppose that ridiculous hat makes you for real? You better believe it does. This hat kept me alive in Vietnam. I was a grunt. I mean, on the ground. 
I'm gonna sign a case on doing a C. I was in a cave with rats. I'm telling you, they look like dogs. Your husband. Well, so am I. It's crawling around on my hands and knees. And the beast was pointing around on day and night. And I was in there with the rats. This hat is what kept me alive. You hear? This is my lucky hat. It kept me alive. Half the platoon blown away. You feeling well? Yeah, yeah, I feel all right. I like that hat, but it really doesn't work for this party. What do you know about anything? I had this hat in Vietnam. Are you still at war? Yeah, yeah, sometimes I think so. Hide behind these. That way it won't be quite so obvious. I like the hat. I'll hold it for you. Eyes fine as wine, husband. Mm. Girl, that man is something to look at. Let me tell you. Mm. No, I like to a lot more than just look at the <laughs> No chance of that, because he loves the ground she walks on. Mm. Yeah, but he's still a man. Yeah. <laughs> and Vashti does him so well. Is she one of those women who nags a lot? <laughs> Doesn't he wish? Poor baby. Girl, haven't you heard? Mm. I mean, you're serious, freak of the week type. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, really? Well, I, I hadn't heard all that. Are you sure? As sure as I'm not a virgin. Ooh, <laughs> sure. Who's <laughs> that? Oh, I invited her. She's a friend of George's. His name is Artist Buchanan. This is his name. Introduce you. Don't tell me that the butterfly is ready to emerge from her cocoon, or is she, shall I say, horny? Yeah, that's it. Girl, she's horny. Introduce me to the man. Artist Buchanan. My lifelong friend and business partner, Natasha Campbell. Lifelong friend, huh? Now that's the kind of relationship to have. Miss Campbell, the pleasure is mine. Please, call me Natasha. Uh, I think I hear the dog barking. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> See you later. Well, Natasha, I feel a little out of place. Uh, I don't know a soul here. Well then, allow me to introduce you around. It's a very nice crowd. I'm sure. Yeah, Freddie, come on over here. Come on over, Freddie. Anyway, Counselor, isn't that your plan? You're getting paid a little early, aren't you? Wipe that lipstick off your face, man. Now, come on over here and straighten this turkey out. Give him the word. Would you tell him that Magic is the man with the golden hand? No, that's Larry Bird is what's happening. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Bird was the word. No, no, wait a minute. Bird got how many MVPs? How many times Bird got MVPs? Past him. Past him. Well, your problem is Freddie, you're in the wrong thing. This year, man, you know, bird was the word until magic was heard. Oh, man, come on. Now look here, man, you know another magic is the man with the hand. Look, look, I said I want another bottle of John Perry on. The party's over. Come on, kiss you your throat. I am not drunk, you bastard. I'll oh, fool you, you short, trivia-eyed punk. She's such a lush. Girl, who's been with a crazy-ass husband like that? Remember Charlene Jones? The chick that works for the phone company. Oh, yeah. Girl with long hair and light eyes. Oh. That's the one. All right. Charlene was going with Fast Eyes Old Man before they met. And she told me that he took care of plenty business and did it well. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
Well, if anyone would know, it would be that girl Shelly, because I heard she was a little freak herself. Mm -hmm. And brags about it. <laughs> Not <laughs> If that's the case, and Dash Die is a fool with a capital F. Isn't she, though? Ooh. And this is one chick that knows how to take advantage of a fool. Excuse me. What do you like to say? I don't like those You know, why don't you just put that down the hall to the right? Okay? Thanks. You know, what do you think about this color for the door? Okay, by me. Mm, I like it. Yeah? Okay. Good. How's the lab progressing? I'm headed there right now. Hopefully, I'm going to be done by Saturday, and I'll be in business. <laughs> so I'll see you later. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye! -bye. bye. Which hand has the blue? Hi, <laughs> green. Good girl. Ooh, your daughter is absolutely adorable. Oh, you're not with her 24 hours a day. I know. Must be a wonderful feeling. What? Being with her 24 hours? Well, that and being a mother. It's not too late, you know. Too late? To have a child. Oh, I wouldn't want to have one necessarily. But I have thought about adopting one. An older child. A teenager, perhaps. A teenager? Shelby, that doesn't make any sense. If you're going to adopt, why not an infant so you can raise it practically from birth? Well, I couldn't handle that. I don't have the patience. I was raised by grandparents who didn't have the patience, and I know just how horrible a child's life is under those circumstances. I wouldn't put any child through that. You wouldn't have to make their same mistake. But I would. If I was forced to have it. You know the saying, the sins of the parents are visited upon the children. Anyway, let's get off that subject. What about tonight? We going out? Oh, sure. I can get Sheldon to babysit. Tonight? Oh, she said you want to baby tonight. Is that answer your question? That's one hell of a relationship, if you ask me. Well, you better play the cards the way they're dealt. You're only on this planet for one round. So you better grab everything available. Tomorrow is nothing. I thought Linda was a little But well, that's what you get for thinking in your condition. But hey, I'm going to go dance. Enough. You plan on holding that rail enough all evening? Well, you welcome to help. Got a name? Yeah, Bastard. Oh, yeah? What does Bastard do? A lot of things. Indeed. What might some of those things be? Oh, you'll find out. You want to dance? How could I refuse? <laughs> no one ever does. I do, I shall see why. You see what I'm telling you? You thought I was lying, didn't you? Well, I see it, but I still don't believe it. Uh -uh. Oh, mm. Yes, you were right. I'm always right. Mm. I know how to spot an advantage. Yeah. Well, go for what you know. That's the only Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know Watch me. Don't you want to know my name? Not really. Well, why not? Because after tonight, I'll never see you again. That's why. Now stop talking and let's dance. Hey, girl. We're leaving. You come with us? No, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You sure you'll be all right? Yes, Mother Hen. I'll be just fine. Now run along and take care of the brood. Hey, girl, how's 
it going? Oh, pretty good. And how about you? Fabulous, darling. Listen, we're lunching at Natasha's on Saturday. Oh, not me, because George is flying in. Oh, that's right. The ever mysterious George. You know, Lynn, sometimes I wonder if this man really exists. Oh, he exists all right. And I'll prove it to you in just about eight months. on the flight from Mexico City, or it could have been that trip from Toronto, or that Tokyo, or, oh, hell, I don't remember. <laughs> Listen, darling, a girl should only remember her first time, okay? I'm so excited for you, girl. Oh, thank you. I'm crying. Listen, have you told the others yet? No, because I wanted to be sure. You know how Natasha likes to gossip. Oh, honey, isn't that the truth? Wait a minute, but Natasha's going to love it. Why don't you let me tell them on Saturday? Okay. We're well, happy for you. <laughs> Don't you? I mean, you know, even though sometimes I kind of act like a space cadet. Linda, you are a space cadet. Now, we forget about that and... Come on, let's make love. Mm -hmm. a wife who is a, uh, a mental case. Linda, I'm gonna be a mental case if you don't lay back down here. Look, I am not embarrassed. Now, when I married you, I knew you had a problem. But I married you because I love you. not going to be a mental case. The doctor already told you that. Doctor? Office? Remember? George? Hmm? I want our baby to see a psychiatrist. Just as soon as it's born. Yeah. We'll take it from the hospital to the psychiatrist office. Because, you know, an uh, ounce of cure is worth a pound of prevention. Or, or something like that. Linda, a newborn baby can't talk, can't walk. All it can do is shit, eat, and cry. And if you don't lay back down here, I'm gonna cry. Oh. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm. Wait, I... Do you know where Mommy and Daddy are going tonight? To my school. That's right, open house. And who will we see? My teacher. Oh? Yes, and will she give us a good report? Yes. Why? Because I did <laughs> the homework. No, you didn't. Who did your homework the other night? You, because I was too sleepy. That's right, you sleepyhead. You want Daddy to bring you anything? Mm-hmm. Well, I think you better tell him. What? If you pretty, please bring me some Goody chocolatey ice cream. I'll give you a big hug and a big kiss. 
You know what, kid? You got it. <laughs> Camille was an outsider. And like many women who wanted to associate with us, we knew her, but didn't really trust her. As for perfume, well, we didn't form that company to make money. What was important to us was our friendship. The Groovy Girls had always been about friendship. Speaking of food, Natasha, have you done any cooking for that new love in your life? Not yet. Ow. <coughs> We're still talking, that's all. Remember, Natasha, always say no on the first date. Don't tell her that. Is he good-looking, Natasha? If he is, you'd better say yes the first time, the second time, and any time he asks for it. Last time, I think you say yes to a man with two broken legs and a back break. I did. <laughs> okay. Now, when you mess up and Sheldon catches you, don't say we didn't warn you. Believe me when I tell you Sheldon has no cause to complain, honey. I take care of plenty of business at home. Can you say the same? What I do at home is of no concern of yours. I just think you should try and change your lifestyle. I worry about you, Vashti. Yes, Mother Hen, I know you worry about me. You worry about all of us. But we're grown, and we can take care of ourselves. Thank you. Ooh, you ladies are getting too scandalous for me. I am out of here. Ciao, baby. Okay, ciao, 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 ciao. Okay. I'll talk to you guys Monday. Get my stuff. Oh. You know, Natasha. Don't start. Five years without any commitment does things to a woman. Well, crying out loud, Shelby. I haven't been celibate since Ricky died. There've been men. I know that. But those were just brief affairs. Casual sex with no meaning. And how do you know what they were? I know. Just be a little careful this time out, okay? You are so overprotective, it's a shame. Because I know you, Natasha. With you, it's all or nothing. There's no middle ground. I just don't want to see you get hurt. I've got a bad feeling about him, that's all. What kind of bad feeling? I can't explain. Just a feeling. Oh, Shelby, you take this independent thing too seriously. I'm going to be just fine. Just fine. I hope so.
as I please. I put my kids' welfare before everything. If you thought any other way, I wouldn't be sitting here. And sometimes, I just want to be alone. Can you handle it? I can handle it. Question is, can you? I think so. I think so. Robert and Keisha had fought with each other from the first day of their marriage. And while we never spoke of it, we knew what kept them together. And it wasn't the money. <laughs> oh, that ball is just simply fabulous. You see that house? I mean, that interior decorator must have spent thousands on doing it. He must do our east way. Every time we go to charity function, you have a couple of drinks. We have to make a $30,000 donation. You think we're the only people there with money? What do you mean, we? Well, they check on my personal account. That's the problem. You, your father, and your personal account. I don't want to discuss it. We'll discuss it if I say so. Hey, look, I don't want to discuss me, my father, or our legal matters with you right now. This problem, child, needs a trick. Keisha, not tonight. Oh, yes, tonight. Not tonight, Keisha. Oh, yes, Robert. I'm not playing with you. I Robert, I'm not playing with you. Keisha, I'm not playing with you. Please. You seem lost in thought. I've had a long day. You should relax more. It eliminates the tension. That's my gig, removing other people's tension. I'm a masseur. A masseur? Oh, now that sounds like interesting work. It can be. Well, what does a girl have to do to get a massage? Are you serious? One way to find out. Don't be shy. 
enjoyed it, didn't you? Of course. Then why the 20 questions? You got a free piece of ass. Now let's just leave it at that way, don't you? Somehow I can't figure you. Most of the freaks I know don't have anything going for them. You, you're educated. You're probably married with kids. You got money. You come across as a very classy lady. It doesn't add up. I must be dreaming. I screw a guy's brains out and you must have played psychologist. I want to know more about you. You wouldn't know so damn badly. Why don't you ask my father? Your father? Yes. I don't understand. No one ever does. Ever go to the movies? Of course, every chance I get. Ever see a film called Chinatown? Who hasn't? Faye Dunaway, Jack Nicholson, John Houston. It's a classic. What about it? What about it? Maybe you should see it again. Why? What's your point? Because it'll answer all of your questions. Keisha this morning, and she had terrible bruises all over her face where Robert had hit her. I have tried talking to her about her drinking, but she won't listen to me. But somebody has got to do something. We've got to get her in some type of detox program or something, because I'm afraid she's going to drink herself to death. You or me? You, Mother Hen. I knew you'd say that. <coughs> Ouch! You know something, girl? You really need to dump your own man and the booze. Because neither one is doing you any good. Bobby. Can't do that. What the hell do you mean you can't? Just walk out. I did. Four times. You could do the same if you want to. I can't make it on my own. That's bullshit and you know it. No, it's not. 
saw what happened to my mother. When she left my dad, he would come home drinking on the weekends. Why the fight? I mean, she took it for as long as she could. She just needed it. She was really miserable. I mean, really unhappy. I just know all my life to end like that. She doesn't have to. Hell, girl. Bobby isn't the only guy in the world. If you stay in this crazy ass marriage, you're as sick as he is. For God's sake, Keisha, open up your eyes for once! You don't understand. Hey, Bobby. He just wants to be. Beat the love. shit out of you. Every chance he gets. You don't watch yourself. He's gonna kill you one day. And if he doesn't, the booze will. Hey, you guys. How do I look? Huh? Fat. Fat. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm five months pregnant. Now, come on. Do I look great? Such vanity. Hey, when you got it, you got it. You know, I went to the obstetrician the other day, and he said smooth sailing, and that the next four months there won't be any problems. Speaking of problems, I have one that can't wait four months. Something wrong, Natasha? I'm pregnant. <gasps> oh, gosh, welcome to the club. What do you do? I'm not up to having another child, Linda. Not physically, not mentally, not emotionally, not anything, okay? I didn't mean to yell at you. Does artists know? Well, that's my problem. Should I tell him before or after the abortion? You don't have to tell him anything. It's your body. Well, I think you should. And so do I. After all, it's not like he wasn't there. A little careless there, weren't you? Guilty, Your Honor. got caught up in the passion of the moment, that's all. Mm, haven't we all? Well, what do you think he'll say? There's nothing to say. Oh, I think there is. I'm not apologizing. And I'm not sorry. But I don't want you to take it personally, either. A man's child is snatched away from him before he even knows it exists. And you say, don't take it personal. Now, just how am I supposed to take it? I don't know. But not like that. Good night, Natasha. Good night. Aren't you coming in? No. I'm not in the mood. Do I get a good night kiss? You get nothing. Now, get out of the car. I'm sorry you feel like this. Did I hear you say something about feeling? Now, how could you possibly know anything about how anybody feels? No, please, just get out of the car. Sounds so final. Are you saying it's over between us? Yeah, Natasha. I'm saying it's over. Shelby said she had a bad feeling about that guy. Yeah, I'm sorry about the wrong advice. Don't give it a second thought, Linda. Better I found out when I did than sometime down the road. I just 
just thought that artists would have been more mature, that's all. Speaking of maturity, you're taking this awfully well. Don't let this look fool you, girl. I heard inside. I was really into him. <sighs> I can't... I just don't seem able to meet the right guy. I mean, I look at you, and George, and Shelby, and Freddie, and Vashti, and Sheldon, and even Keisha, and that crazy Robert of hers. Me, I don't seem to have any luck. I mean, if they're not threatened by my independence, then they want to be taken care of. Oh, what's worse, honey, they don't want any commitment. And I refuse to get involved with a married man. How do you guys do it? Oh, you had Ricky. Oh, Ricky. <sighs> My God. Happiness like that? I don't think I'll ever find a guy like him. Natasha, that's your problem. You expect every guy to be like Ricky instead of themselves. Am I doing that? It kind of looks that way from here. That's sick, isn't it? Well, it could be worse. You could be neurotic like me. <laughs> now that's sick. Look, uh, tell me something. Are you got any roommates? I like to get a little kinky sometimes. Nah, just a husband and a daughter. Uh, yeah, right, a husband. A husband? Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Forget it, man. I, look, I'm not into premature death, okay? It's nice. Relax, relax. My husband will be gone most of the evening, and my daughter's spending the weekend with the girlfriend. Everything's cool, nothing to worry about. Come on. Husband, stupid. Husband? You married? Wait, why did you say you were married? Hey, man. Look, look, man. I didn't know she was married. I swear on my mother's grave, man. I didn't know she was married. I mean, she hit on me in the bar and everything. But she didn't say nothing about being married. Baby, why did you tell me you were married? Man, she didn't say a word. Not, not, not a word, man. Believe me. I respect another man's, another man's woman. You understand what I mean? I mean, dealing with married women is not my thing, brother. You understand what I'm saying? I like this suit, man. This is nice. I, I used to have one. I, I, look, I tell you what, man. Like, I'm gone, okay? Like, never to return, okay? Not, not to see my face again. No, no. I'm history. Thinking, Sheldon. I'm sorry I never intended to embarrass you. What was his name? I don't know. 
Bill, I think. I, I'm not sure. The name, the face, not important. You wouldn't understand. I sure as hell don't. Have there uh, been others? Have there been others? Yes. How many? I told you I don't know. Oh, of course you do. You're a grown woman. You know how to count. How many? Twenty, thirty, forty. Yes, fifty, sixty, a hundred. As many as you like. Well, I'll be God damn. Where are you going? What do you care? This is your house. Vicky is your daughter. Oh, is she? Oh, God. How you must hate me. Yes, Sheldon. Oh, yes. Vicky is your child. I may be a whore to you, but I am not that vicious. I will be at my dad's for a week. And I want you gone when I get back. If I go, I'll take Vicky. No, when you go, I will make arrangements to visit. You just pack up your shit and leave. Why is my life so messed up with Daddy's little girl? Since the age of ten. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you, Shelby? I was Daddy's little girl in more ways than one. You know what made it so bad, Shelby? You know what made it so bad? What made it so bad was the fact that I liked it. Isn't that sick? Oh, God, Shelby, I hated him. But he was my father. And I liked what he did to me. He made me feel so good inside. He, he had no rights, that son of a bitch. He ruined my life. Ever since he first touched you, I know how that must hurt. The one man who you should trust above all others. It's all right now, Vesta. It wasn't your fault. You don't have to destroy yourself because of it. Mm-hmm. Bye.
Camille for her treachery, as we were at Vashti for her foolishness. But what none of us foresaw at the time was just what our anger would lead to. Mommy, Mommy, police are here. Yes, and a lady. The police, come on. Oh, are you Mrs. Natasha Campbell? Yes. Is anything wrong? I'm Miss Cordor with Children's Services. May I come in, please? Are these your children, Scotty and Tiffany? Yes, why? I have a court order authorizing me to remove them from the home for their own protection. What? Protection from whom? A child abuse complaint has been filed against you. Who filed this complaint? I'm sorry, I don't have that information. There will be a court hearing in four weeks. All of your questions will be answered. Well, I mean, what will happen to them in the meantime? We'll be placed in foster homes until your hearing. Officers, please. We are not going to let you take these children away from this home. Now, I am sick and tired of these bourgeois types hiding behind your money while you abuse your children. And I, for one, intend to see this. Now, if you insist on interfering, I will call for back up and take you all to jail in handcuffs. We can play it your way. What's it gonna be, ladies? Oh, oh my God! Don't hit my children! Please! No! 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 No!
Well, maybe if you had children of your own instead of acting like a bull dyke, you think different. What did you say? You heard me. Oh, oh my God, Mr. Stop this stop in my body. You okay? Yeah, the two of us are fine. Well, I'm not. You had no right to say what you did. It's not true, and you know it. You were wrong to slap her, Shelby. What? You're taking her side? Well, that tears it with us. For the record, Natasha, I'll call Freddie to see if he can find out what happened. Beyond that, I'll stay with the company to the loan is paid. Otherwise, I want nothing else to do with you. Any of you! <laughs> in the past like Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, just like children. It's silly. It's a silly game, that's all it is. is like a road map. I hope that's a compliment. It is. Well, I see you like chess and hate furniture. I love chess. I just don't have the money for furniture yet. I just bought this place. Mm -hmm. Well, it definitely needs a woman's touch. Are you volunteering? You want it to be the exception. Are you still interested? Of course. Now, you know how I am. 
and I can't promise you how quickly I'll change and well you'll just have to believe that certainly I understand Well, then, if you'll direct me to the boudoir. There's plenty of time for that. I think we should talk first. You really are different, aren't you? Hold me, Paul. I just feel like everything around me is falling apart. I feel like Humpty Dumpty all broken into a million pieces. I've got a lot of glue, Chinatown. Fashtai. Fashtai Caldwell. I like Chinatown better. Mm. Mm. And even the judge could tell the charges were false once he read the medical reports. The kids will be released Friday. You're an angel, Freddy. I feel so bad about the girls. If this hadn't happened, we'd still be good friends. I hate to see us break up after all this time. I just hate it. You can't blame yourself for something like this, Natasha. No one could have predicted it would have happened like it did. Somehow I still feel it's all my fault. Oh, God, I just wish there was something I could do. Friendships have a way of mending themselves when they break. I hope so. I sure hope so. We sold 43,000 units, giving us a cash flow of $160,000. With quarterly income tax deposits due tomorrow, payroll on Friday, deduct purchasing, supplies and miscellaneous expenditures, and other operational costs of $10,000 for training for a new computer, leaves us with a net income of $50,000, 35 of which should be applied against our bank loan leaving us $15,000 to play with. How shall we spend it, lady? I say we increase the advertising. The best products in the world won't do us a bit of good if nobody knows about it. No. We increase our field staff so we can widen our distribution. You should have thought about that before. Now the advertising budget has to suffer because you dropped the ball. Maybe you could have done better, Miss Know-it-all. I sure could have. Well, you've done so little for this company that any effort on your part would seem like a miracle. Fine, then you do it. Don't throw this at me, bitch. You die, isn't it? Whenever you're wrong, you start naming calls. Don't get me started, Miss Shelby, or I'll show you what my style really is like. Please, you two. This is supposed to be a business meeting. Like hell it is. Oh, God. I never should have stopped taking my meds. Linda, are you all right? My doctor, I should have listened to him. I can feel it coming along. Oh, God. I never should have stopped taking my meds. I'm getting sick again. Oh, no. Don't oh, get me back to the hospital again. I can't go back. Thanks to you. Don't start, you two. <sighs> Thinking. Hi. Darling, don't try to talk, okay? I'm fine. I'm just a little sleepy. First happened when I went away to college. What happened? My 
nervous breakdown. Sorry for the inconvenience, gang. I mean, I know I probably should have told you my stuff. That man, our motto and all, you know. But I just didn't know how you'd think about having a crazy, a groovy girl. Oh, sweetie pie. Do you think for a minute we'd let something like this break up years of friendship? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so get well, groovy girl. Mm. <laughs> okay. I love you guys. Okay. The beard is fine while he's on vacation. But, uh, he'll have to shave it off before he goes back to work. I'm not going back to work, Linda. Not going back? Why? Because somebody has to look after you. And I certainly can't count on the groovy girls to do it. That is not fair, George. You know we're her closest friends. Best friends? It was your friendship that caused her to spend a week in the hospital. Nobody wanted it this way. I mean, even as kids, Shelby and Bastai fought all the time. Well, they're not kids anymore. They're women. Intelligent black women. It's about time you all grew up. Well, maybe we're afraid to grow up. Well, then you're going to have to get over your fear, Linda, because I just can't take this anymore. I can't. Either it's the groovy girls or it's me. Strange, I... I was so wrapped up in myself that I... I never once realized how difficult it's been for you. Of course I would choose you, George. You know that. It's just that I just thought that we could work things out with the groovy girls. But if we can't, then I'll walk away. And I won't look back. You mean to tell me that you lead the groovy girls? Huh. Yes. With no regrets. Hey, baby, I'm going to bed. You coming? In a while. Hmm? Don't be too long now. Shelby? Yeah? I think there's something that we should talk about before you go. What is it, baby? It's about your friends, uh, the groovy girls. They ain't no friends of mine. Oh, I think they are. I think that you are wrong to blame the whole group for the actions of one. Do you now? Yes, I do. Let me tell you something, Mr. Big Time Lawyer. I don't need the groovy girls in my life. And I don't really need you. So why don't you just get the hell out? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, baby. You know that. Now, why do you make it so hard for me to love you? I need you. What's so difficult about admitting that you need me? Need you? Yeah. Me? Need you? I don't need you, Freddie. And I don't need a groovy girl. I am fine by myself. I don't need anybody. So why don't you just get out? Just get out. Shit. Shelby. I'm not going anywhere. You know that we were meant for each other, Shelby, so you just have to stop it. Stop it now. Hmm? I love you. You know I love you. And you know I know what you're feeling. I know what you're feeling, baby. It's all right. You're safe with me. I'll protect you from the world. We'll protect each other. Hmm? Now stop it. But I think you should tell them. I can't, sure Freddie. Can. I can't. Sure you can. They're your friends. Make them understand. Set everything straight. Friends like that aren't easy to replace. I know. Well? All right. All right. Good. Where am I? I really, uh... Am I really that difficult to love? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you come to bed right now, 
I'll show you just how easy to love I could be. Wow, baby, I got a trial in the morning. Easy, Freddie. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Freddie, no, I'm easy. No. Easy, Shelby, baby. It's not it's fair. Easy it's not fair, easy to Shelby. love me, Daddy. Come on, baby. Come well, on, big Daddy. Get a Come on. Yes. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. she needs to see. In fact, we all ought to have a little chat with her. You know, I am tired of all this tension between us. Linda's right, Freddie. We all need to speak with her. But when? She avoids us all the time. Well, let's see. Why don't you uh, come by on Friday, all right? About noon? Mm-hmm. I'll be gone from the house by then, okay? Hmm? And she will see all of When she loved a man, she loved him deeply and forever. And so I understood her need to seek out the truth about artists and her children. Because I knew Natasha as I knew them all. And she was blinded by her own desperate longings. What bothered me was that I had warned her and she wouldn't listen. Natasha never listened.
When I was a senior in college, I did some volunteer work working with some inner city kids. One of them came down with the mumps. Since I never had them, I came down with them too. When you get mumps that late in life, it can make you sterile. That's what happened to me. First, I didn't care. You know, being a professional football player, you travel a lot, meet a lot of ladies. So one thing I knew for sure was that none of them could stick me with a paternity suit. One in 10 million. That's what the doctors told me my chances were of having a child. And then I met you, Natasha. And together we beat those odds. You took my prize from me before I even had a chance to claim it. A prize? Is that what you think a child is, a prize? Some kind of Super Bowl trophy to prove your masculinity? Look, it's not what I meant. Look, I'm sorry for all the trouble that I caused you. But I was angry and hurt. And I wanted to hurt you, too. I want you to know the pain that I feel being only half a man. You know, Artis, having children doesn't make you a man. And being sterile doesn't make you half of one. I just wish you had cared enough to, to have told me. Why did you say something? Would it have made a difference? I don't know. Maybe. And I wish I had told you. Look, Natasha, what's happening to us has been happening to black folks for a long, long time. You know, it'd be nice to break the cycle just once. Talk about it. Just talk. I'll have to think about it. Say what you have to say, Shelby, and make it fast. Because I really don't want to be here. I really don't. Bash, why don't you just sit down? I'll stand if you don't mind. That way I'll be above all the bullshit. When I was 13, my daddy died. It changed my entire life. I never missed anyone or needed anyone more than I did him. He was my whole world. And when he passed away, I thought, life for me is ended. I was confused and lonely. Lord, you know, my mother abandoned me when I was younger. I was alone, depressed. There was this boy, Michael. He told me I was nice looking. He told me other things. I mean, I knew what he wanted, why he was saying those things. It didn't really matter. I was so lonely and missing my daddy, so I didn't even care. And well, I was three months pregnant on my 14th birthday. We had just started eighth grade. You remember that time? I was always crying in gym. Remember how I used to talk about my daddy? That summer, I went on a trip to Europe. Remember, Keisha? Your mom drove me and my grandmother to the airport. But it was a lie. 
It wasn't a trip to Europe. It was a long summer in the country because my grandmother was embarrassed about my condition. I guess because I was so young, the baby came at eight months. There were complications. And they took the womb out. You had a hysterectomy at 14. I never saw my baby. Grandma took the child the moment it was born and placed it for adoption. I never saw it. To this day, I, I don't know if I had a son or a daughter. She would never tell me. No one ever did. I don't know if, if my child is tall or short, light or dark, skinny or fat. Alive or dead. I don't know. don't know what kind of a nightmare it is to live your life year in and year out, drawing pictures in your mind of a child you never seen. No, no. Freddie was right. They did understand, and we were friends again. But it was different now. We were different. Something in us had changed, and we somehow knew our relationship would never be quite the same again. I knew also there was something else I had to do. Something I had put off much too long. You wake? Huh? Huh? Yeah, I am now. What time is it? It's late, but I really need to talk to you. I'm listening. I've been thinking about it for a long time, and I decided I want to find my child. Will you help me? Oh, please, Shelby, leave it alone. What happened, happened, and whoever and whatever that child is, it has a life of its own. Don't stir up the kettle at this late date. Not now. Don't set yourself up for a heartbreak. Just let it go, baby. I can't go uh, another 15 years without knowing. I gotta find out what happened. Just so you'll help me. It may take a long time. I don't care how long it takes. Just get me something, anything, like a... A photograph or a birth certificate. Anything. Even a death certificate? Well, yeah. Even a death certificate. Don't worry. Hold me. I'm always here for you, sweetheart. Always. Every time she goes to a Beverly Hills auction, she acts a stone fool. Four thousand dollars for one earring. Six thousand dollars for a tennis racket she can't even play. A hundred twenty-five dollars for a lamp. Keisha, you spent a hundred twenty-five dollars for a lamp. What kind of light does it shine? Right. What do you care? It was my money. Besides, it was a special antique. Are you familiar with the definition of antique? Old, very old. Look, you lush, nothing that old's worth $125,000. God damn it, Bobby, don't you call me no lush, all right? I call you anything I want. Lush, 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 Told you, Bobby. Told you when I came in this damn house that I was tired. You know what I'm going through with Shelby. I told you, but oh no, you just had to push my button, didn't you? 
body. Why don't you get up and tell me what you want for dinner? Now quit playing word games to get up. Bobby? Bobby? Keisha, you messed up my hat. I spent a year in Vietnam and nothing happened to it, and you messed up my hat. That proves it wasn't such a lucky hat after all, doesn't it? No. I still have you. All I want to do is love you. In your life, play some part. When I play of honor in your heart that's all I really want to do My daughter's missing the hell out of her father. And you? I want her to be happy, of course. Do you want to go back to him? I doubt that he'd even take me back. He may not. Still, if it's that important, I think you've got to try. Well, what if he agrees? Then what happens to us? I'm not one to interfere. And if he doesn't? Then we'll just finish buying the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really helped put all the pieces back together for me. And I don't want you to ever think I'm ungrateful. I knew there would be no guarantees. I don't want to leave, Paul. I really don't want to. Hi. Got a minute? Be my guest. I've been meaning to get by, but it seems I'm always so busy. What's on your mind? Vicky really enjoys her weekends with <laughs> I know you didn't come here to discuss Vicky. No, I didn't. I wanted to talk about us. About getting back together. Well, there's... Nothing to talk about. Nothing at all. I thought being away from each other would clear the air. Give us a chance to start over with a clean slate. A clean slate? <laughs> you can't be serious. A clean slate? Don't patronize me, Sheldon, please. 
I've never had to beg for anything before. And I don't like doing it now. But if it's what you want... If it's what I want, I don't want anything from you. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. I can wait outside if you like. Hey, uh, you're not interrupting a thing. Camille? This is Vashti, my soon-to-be ex-wife. It's finished. Uh, I'm sure you've two met somewhere before. Hello? I'll be in the back when you finish. So it really is over between us. Would you uh, like it in writing? One last goodbye. Not even for old time's sake. Not even for your funeral. What the hell? My mother always said if you make your own bed, you have to lie in it. And I guess it's time I start doing just that. Hey, I'm hungry. Let's go to Geraldine's where we can eat and party. I feel like dancing. Let's go for it. What do you say? Groovy girl. Groovy girl. What do you say? Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Change has not come easy for Vashti, but Paul's attention has helped. She'll be okay. She's a groovy girl. We're all groovy girls. And that's our story. Well, Mr. Davis, we have to go now. Yeah. Oh, oh well, thanks for the company, lady. Okay. Mm, let me get a kiss. Have a happy birthday, Mrs. Get Davis. Get home safe. Call me. Let me know you got home safe. Okay. 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 All right. And lock your car door. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Hey, baby. How you doing, sweetheart? <laughs> oh. mm. There's somebody I'd like you to meet. Oh? Wait here. Okay. Shelby? I'd like you to meet Marissa Ann Langford. Hi, how you doing? Marissa lives in Detroit, but she would like to spend more time out here in Los Angeles, especially since her mother lives here. Mother? You mean she's my daughter? Happy birthday, baby. I had a girl. She was so pretty. You look just like me. You think color everything. Oh, of course I do. You're my mother. Oh, Freddy, Freddy, look at her. Look at my child. Oh, God. Oh, look, I, I, I was 14. I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure. I thought I was a little girl. I'm sorry. I can never hold that against you. You can wipe your tears now. Mom, we'll never be separated again, Mother. <laughs> Let me see you.